awesome to go to the book of 2 Corinthians. And we're not going to finish all of this today. But there is a new place that God has shifted us to today, Brother Kwasi. And I knew that it was the right message when I came into the service. Joshua chapter 2, if you haven't saved man, we're going to jump around in Joshua chapter 2, and what I want you to do is we want to read verses 1 and 2, then we're going to jump down to verse 9 through 11, then we're going to jump to the 6th chapter, and we're going to read the 1st and the 2nd verse, the 10th verse, the 15th and the 16th verse. Then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And somebody said, my Lord, that's a lot of scripture. Well, let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 3rd through the 6th verse. Then we're going to give you what the Lord has given us for the people of God. So if you have Joshua chapter 2, do you have to say amen? Let us read that in concert. Let's read, ready, read. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, especially in Jericho. So they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab, and they lodged there. It was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. Now, if you would, do me a favor and jump down to verses 9 through 11 in that same chapter. You have it? Let's read it. And it says, And said the man, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed, as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord, your God, he is God in heaven and above and on the earth beneath. Now let's flip over to chapter 6. We have with there. Just hold on with me. Chapter 6. And if we could read, if you could hold those first two verses. In Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, and then we're going to read verse 10, and then we're going to read verses 15 and 16. Do you have it? Let's read. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See! Say, hold on. 
saying, watch this. A lot of people say that Moses had been disqualified. Come on. Because he smoked the rock. But Moses, can I, can, I, can I just say this to you? Moses did not get disqualified. Moses' job was over. What am I trying to say? Moses' name in the Hebrew means to draw out.
Preach it. Because your life is raining and you can't get a breakthrough when you come to church, you try to blame it on the church. Who oh, is quiet in here? Preach it. It's like for Christmas in here. Because you forgot that when you was in Egypt, you were praying for deliverance. Yeah. And now you want to get mad. Yeah. Oh Lord, if you get me out of this marriage, I'll praise you forever. Now you sing it like, oh my king, I ain't gonna never get married. You were just praying to get out of the marriage you were in. Preach, baby. But watch this. They were in the place that they wanted to be in. Oh, yes, sir. Because they didn't want to get blessed. Because when God told them, go spy out, he didn't even tell us, but he said, go over to Canaan. I done already gave it to you. But what did they do? Well, let's send some spies. You know, we know you know, let's help him out. Uh-huh. That's when we get in trouble. When we try to help God out, when he didn't already said something. And you're like, Lord, if you said it, send me a confirmation. Lord, if you said it, let it rain tomorrow. Lord, if you said it, Lord, let the sun come out. All of this trying to help instead of taking God and his word. God said, go over to Canaan. I done already gave it to you. So what they did, they tried to help God out and end up messing themselves up. Oh, yes, Lord.
get away from everybody you know. Uh-huh, see, that's the problem right there. A lot of us hang around too many people that we know. And every time you open up your big mouth and start telling them what God told you he was going to do, the first thing they do is, you can't do that. God ain't told you that. He don't want you to do that. Get out. Get away. Get away. Get away. He said, get out of your country. Away from your kingship. Away from everybody. To a land that I'm going to watch this. And I'm going to give you, but I'm going to show you. Oh, God. God ain't going to give you nothing. He going to show you where he wants you to go. And then it's up to you to go get it. That ain't, this, I ain't trying to make you who jumped all around. No, I'm trying to get some sound word in you. Because we getting ready to walk into the promised land. But watch this. Uh-oh. I hear you, Holy Ghost. We got a few more days in the wilderness. Because there's still some folk out to die. Some folk got to die. They got to die. Because they, they refuse to be converted. They got to die because they complain. They got to die because every time we're talking about going to another level, it ain't going, oh, oh, we can't go to no another level. And you see, we ain't got that many people in here now. And you talk about going to another level. So you got to die. So we got to keep on walking. So this is what God said, do. God said, okay, y'all want to complain? Yeah. Bet that. Yeah. Sanctify the congregation. Right. Separate the wheat from the chain. Everybody that's over 20, put them on that side. Everybody that's under 20, put them on that side. What's going to happen is, all these four right here, they're going to die in the wilderness. So I'm letting y'all know that's on the right side, that's on the 20, you ain't going in there yet. But I'm still going to sustain you. Uh-huh. What do you do? What do you do when you're stuck into a place, when you're stuck in a place that it wasn't even your fault? What do you do when you're in the wilderness because of something your mama did? Because of something your dad did?
feel somebody in my spirit got offended when I said the older generation. If it don't apply to you, don't take it. Yes, sir. What I'm finding out is, everywhere I go, I'm reading a book now. People are preaching about it, teaching about it in my school. And what they're teaching about and what the book is about is finishing well. Talking to a brother today, the same folk. Why is the same folk that taught me uh -huh. you got to love your enemy? Yes, yes. That taught me uh -huh. to stay in prayer. Yes. That taught me uh -huh. to honor leadership. Yes. That taught me that it don't matter what nobody else do, keep your eyes on God. Why is it that those are the folk that are acting a fool right now? Yes, sir. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Because they never gave him time to breathe. And they got on they got on his nerves. And because they got on Moses' nerves and he never grieved, God said this. He said, speak to the rock. And water gonna come out. But he spoke to him at the tent of meeting. Now the tent of meeting was the place where God spoke to the whole children of Israel. And this is why God told Moses he was not going to go to the promised land. Because him and Aaron came to the tent of meeting. Yep. They didn't go in it because God's glory was in it. And if they would have went in it, they would have died. They stood outside of the tent of meeting with the whole children of Israel around him. And God spoke to the leaders in front of the people and said, speak to the rock. So when Moses smote that rock twice, he once a mistake. Kissing and he kissed. 
But you say I got willpower. That's what you say. I got I can resist. No, you can't because you were made to reproduce. You can't resist something that you were created to do. What's wrong with your mind? Then you sitting up in there and then you talking about he talking about, but well, let me just walk you to the door and come in and make sure you get in. All right. Is that the stronghold is not an enemy. 
Look at your neighbor, because y'all get real quiet with me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you want to know what the stronghold is, I'm about to tell you right now. And pause for a second. Look back at him and say, it's you. When you pull down the stronghold, everything else is easy. But the stronghold has to be pulled down. Why? Because it's you. How do, what do I mean the stronghold is you? It's you and your experience and what you've been through. It's you and you're not trusted. It's you and you have been divorced three times. Satisfied. 
Not only was she trying everything, but she had an attitude. Yes, yes. Her name is broken down. Ray, Raw. She felt that annoying. I said, she said, Raw and Hal. Raw, watch this. Raw is the sun god in Egypt. So the reason. The reason she let him in, Daniel, is because the thing she thought was God had been defeated by another God. And she heard that there was really a God that was stronger than the God I was serving. So Ra means sun God. And Hal means contentious. She had attitude. But her name also means Spacious. Uh huh. Because even though she had attitude, there was still room for improvement. God, I thank you. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I might be messed up, but there's still some room for improvement. Yes, Lord. So, watch this. Rahab lets the word in. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. She lets the word in. Yeah. And now watch this. Oh, the woman's my boyfriend and I caught up with my dear God and put it out strong on Kathy. I every high thing that is also self against the knowledge of God. Now there's another scripture that says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? <laughs> oh, so guess what happened? When the word got in, the principality heard about it. Y'all need to read your Bibles. I promise you'll be happy just like me if you read your Bible. Because the king heard that the word had came into her house. And the king was the ruler over Jericho. So guess what that makes him? The principality. And the principality. The principality heard that the word had made an end. And he sent word to go see. So he sent the powers to Rahab's house to go get the word. But watch this. Oh, I like what Rahab did. Rahab elevated the word. She took it up. And she hid it. Woo! And I'm reminding the baby. Kata Bashiana, the word. Because we heard that it came in. The faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So even the demons believe and tremble. So the demons had even heard that the word had got in the house. And it's something you call out to out of my house. When demons start getting scared and believe the word, you can look out because the change is about to take place. So what happens is she gets up there and she hides. She says, uh, after they leave, she walks up to him uh, and she said, we have heard about your God. Uh, and we heard, uh, look, look, listen to the word, we heard uh, God send word. Uh, we heard uh, that you came out of Egypt uh, and we heard that your God uh, dried up the Red Sea. Uh, and we also heard uh, that the Lord, he is the God in heaven and in earth. Uh, see, some folk got gods that can only exist in heaven and some folk got gods that can only be there on earth. That's why I can't dig Buddha and Krishna and Muhammad and all of them because they just a god to those people that's on earth. But I serve a god that sits high and he looks low. I serve a god that heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. I serve a god that's so powerful <laughs> that he don't even have to show up. But I can just call his name and stuff that got me captive. Uh, will have to let me go. 
believe the word. And the Bible says, if I believe the word, I confess with my mouth.
want you not to fight, yes, but to walk. Yes, sir, that's good. Yes, yes sir. A lot of us trying to fight. Yes, yes, yes. And you punching the wall. Yes, sir. You fight for yes. that's talking against you yes. behind the wall. Yes. How dumb would I look? If I walked up right now to that brick wall <laughs> with all the mic that's in me yeah. and punched it. Y'all like this dude that lost his mind. Yeah. Well, that's how God looking at some of us in the spirit. Yeah. 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 We punching walls. Cause somebody didn't say something about us. Yeah. Cause somebody didn't talk about us. Yeah. Cause somebody didn't lied on us. Yeah. Because somebody behind the wall talking about us. But hate has been around since the foundation of the earth. And I ain't never seen you, and I don't even know half of y'all like that. But I can guarantee you, if you went to the club, somebody would make with you, because you were small, and they said something crazy to you, if you was in the club, you I'm leaving the club. Are with God for 
a season. Yeah. Some folk got X's on their calendar. God don't show up in two months. Ah. He ain't coming back to church. The Lord said, I want you to consistently walk around this wall once a day. So what does that mean? That my whole day is not to be consumed worrying about how I'm going to come out. It probably took them 30 minutes to walk around that wall one day. And what did they do after they got to walk around that wall? They went back home and went about business. Some of us, every day, we walk around the wall the whole day. Oh, how I'm going to pay my bills. How I'm going to do this. How I'm going to do that. Walk around the wall. And said, just one time. Joshua represents who? Jesus. 
So Jesus said, see, you got to learn how to get the revelation out of the text. Yeah. So Jesus says, on that seventh day, I want you to walk around seven times. And when I tell you to, when Jesus tells you to, shout. And the wall will come tumbling down. A lot of people are like, how did that wall go come down? Was it the trembling? Or the shout that made the wall come down? No. That angel. That angel that they had previously seen. That's why he was in Canaan. Oh God, I'm missing this. He was in Canaan because he was to go before them and win every battle before they got there. Oh God, look at that. So you mean to tell me that God goes before me and he wins every battle before it even starts? How does he win the battle? He wins the battle by taking the fight out, out of your enemy. Because, not because of you, but because the God that you serve. And when they shouted that seventh time, the wall, watch this, came tumbling down. The wall represents a stronghold. Now watch this. When the wall came tumbling down, the Bible says this, that every man went straight ahead and killed what was ever in front of him that wasn't like God. What does that mean? What does that mean? Did they want looking around at nobody else's life? In my life, they went straight ahead and everything in my life that I can see that ain't like God because the stronghold failed. I can kill it. Why? Because when the stronghold failed, that's why they was talking because they thought they was protected by the stronghold. But when they strength failed, now I discovered that the thing that was tormenting me is not as powerful as I thought it was. And now I'm able to kill it. Give me some music, please. I want to call one a little different today. <laughs> but y'all to help me out this morning. I want everybody to come to the altar. We ain't praying. We finna walk. That's why I told y'all to take your heels off. Thank you. Elders, lay hands on the people. Just anoint them with oil. That's all I want you to do. Just anoint them with oil. I promise you, we'll be out of here in a minute. I need you to give me some warfare music, man.